Hello, uh, today I'm here with Ian Siddons Higginworth and I've dragged him into my kitchen table to come and talk about his wonderful book which is called Eat Me, well Environmental Arts Therapy and the Tree of Life. How did you get into sort of using story in your work? Well I come from a, a drama therapy background so we use story all the time um, and um, I think you know, I think storytelling is just a natural part of working outdoors. Really, it's it's hard when you're working outdoors not to connect to particular metaphors, and they always remind you of a story. And so, story kind of gets woven into the practice. Um, I think it helps people um, uh, attach a deeper meaning to their own personal journey. It, it helps people feel part of something bigger, more archetypal. Um, the work is very connected to the cycles of a year mm. and there are stories that connect um, you know, very deeply to, to different months throughout the year, which is really what this book is all about. Yeah, so tell us more about this. Uh, well, the, um, the, the book is inspired by the Celtic tree calendar, so it begins, you begin reading it in November, um, which is when the Celtic year begins, and the reason for that is that the Celtic year follows the natural year, so November is the time when the trees are dropping their seeds uh, and uh, sowing them in the compost of the old year, in the, in the fallen leaves, so the cycle is beginning afresh. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you read a chapter every month through the year, and uh, in every chapter there is a particular tree, or, or perhaps more than one tree, which has associated metaphors and medicine that uh, connects to our feeling journey through the, through the turning year. Um, mm. And I'd say it's very rich in story, very rich in myth and tradition. Um, but all of the work, and this is true of all environmental art therapy, is, um, is, is very feeling-led. Yeah. Um, and when, when we're working outdoors, we always move towards feeling, not away from it, um, and always look for opportunities to, to release and express feeling and find the, you know, the truth that's lying underneath. Mm. Yeah, what I loved about this is that each month, yeah, as you say, there's a, another tree, another story to work with, and you're obviously really well versed in loads of different myths from around the world, etc. Um, I'm just wondering, um, could you give an example like, like of, of how you would work with, with story outdoors, with, with a person um, on, a sort of, on a healing journey? Well, you can go very deeply into a story. You can, um, you know, you can enact out parts of a story. You could be working with, for example, um, the rescuer Branwyn by her sister Bran, which is very much about the way we enslave our feminine, our feeling self, when we should be raising that part of ourselves to into, you know, into a place of esteem and royalty, rather mm. than um, you know, subjugating it for 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 other needs. So you could, you know, the, that, that story is very much about um, Bran Ute laying his body down over the River Shannon as a, as a bridge. And we've done lots of work with bridges, using that story as, a, as an inspiration for that, mm. looking at what, at what, you know, what's stopping people from crossing that bridge, what's stopping people from, uh, uh, yeah, reaching for their feeling self and actually raising it to the, the place it, it needs to be in their life and being led by their heart, not by their head. Yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of ways you can work with a particular story. Um, often it may be that we'll do a piece of work inspired um, by what is found in the, in the woods, by the art that people have made, by the feelings that have, um, that have arisen in that process, and then a story, you know, we'll be reminded of a story and we'll, we'll look at that and it will somehow give meaning and context to the, mm. to the um, experience. So sometimes the story comes in retrospect. Yeah, and um, and uh, pulls everything together in that way. Yeah, I remember coming to you on a dark night and um, going off out into the wilds around the outside of Exeter and um, making something sort of where my hands had found something in the dark, and then we looked at what this represented and we kind of cracked it open, and yeah. inside there there was a story, and it was also what was the story? Do you remember? Oh, it was. The, <laughs> to do with my stepmom and right. things like that. Oh, one of your yeah, stories. Yeah, one of my stories, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, one of those old nuggets. Yeah, um, yeah it was fantastic, actually. Mm. Um, and again, you're also working with the story um, through the year. So I, I 
partly what I thought was really nice, serendipitous that I could mm. talk with you today, is that it's at the end of the this old year and almost the beginning of the new one. Yeah. So what's uh, like what's current now in the Celtic tree cal- calendar that's reflective or okay so so i mean fu- uh, funnily enough a story i use a lot of at this time is a bible story it's the story of moses um and the reason for that is that as when we're in november we we're approaching the e- uh, sorry in october we're approaching the end of the of the celtic year and it's a bit bit like a reed in the river we're beginning to feel the the pull of a new cycle and often it's leading us in a direction we don't want to go um and uh, and th- so October is very much a time for building trust. It begins the fear of a sense of I can't lay my vulnerable self down mm. by this river and I'll just allow it to be carried away. Um, and the whole of the month is really a, a gathering of trust so that we can do that because that's exactly what's needed. In the story, Pharaoh is throwing the children into the, into the river. The old, it's the death of the old way, the death of the old self. And in an act of trust, that child is laid down among the bulrushes. Mm. Um, and, and because of that, Moses you know, is, ascends from being a, a persecuted refugee to a, to a prince of the house of Egypt. And, and that's what we're, in, we're being invited to do now, is to trust, to lay our, our child self down by the river and allow the, the next cycle to carry it on. Fantastic. Mm. Cool. And um, finally, um, last thing. Uh, in the previous videos, I've asked for tips from other storytellers to help sort of budding storytellers mm. um, be more confident storytellers. Yeah. So I was just wondering, you know, in relation to the art, environmental arts therapy work you do, and you know, I know you're a storyteller around a campfire too, mm. um, what, stip- what tips could you give a, a person who's into storytelling and being outdoors okay. to help deepen that okay. relationship. So when I tell stories as an environmental arts service, they're often traditional stories. They're often, you know, they're, they're uh, Celtic stories or related stories that relate to this process. And I will pray see them because the purpose of telling this story is to help somebody understand their own personal process. When I'm telling a story around a campfire, it's a different thing. So I'm wanting to transport somebody away to a completely different world mm. and, and completely steep them in that world. So, um, so when I tell stories around the campfire, I only tell my own stories. And, and the reason for that mm. is because I've, I've, I've written them, I've, I've lived them, they've come from me, and um, um, I just know them in, in every part of my being. So my, my tip would be, if you want to put yourself in the position of being a storyteller, um, which is a bit like stepping onto the stage, then love your material. Mm-hmm. Love what you're going to tell. Beautiful. Because if you're going to sit there and struggle with something you, you don't know very well, then it's just going to make you more self-confident and it hurts more self-conscious and it's going to uh, wear at your, at your, conf- at your self-confidence. But if you can sit down and tell something that you really passionately enjoy telling, then everybody around you will enjoy it just as much. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Lovely too. Yeah, totally with that one. And um, yeah, the last thing. So if people want a copy of this or if they want to get hold of you yeah. for any particular reason, how can they do that? Uh, well, or go, go to my website. So environmental art therapy or Ian Siddons Hagenworth. This book is on there. Uh, Harry Tales, book of my stories is on there. There's a new book that's coming out, which is that's going to have a link to, which is called Environmental Arts Therapy and the that's right, Environmental Arts Therapy, the Wild Frontiers of a Heart. That's an anthology uh, of writing by other environmental arts therapists, which I've edited myself and my colleague in London, Gary Nash, have edited. So um, yeah. My website is probably the best way to get it. Yeah, and yeah. I know you've got a course coming up soon as well. Um, for well, there's, an, there's an environmental yeah. arts therapy London uh, course that runs in London every two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, that's only for um, qualified creative therapists. Okay, but there are other course options um, that may be coming up in the future. So. Yeah, just keep watching the website for that. All right, nice one. Thanks a lot, Ian. This is is my good buddy here. (laughs) Excellent.